It is Saturday morning. It is time to get the hammers and screwdrivers out. It's Tricks of the Trade with West Tennessee's premier honeydew helper, John Allen. Hello, Mr. John. Hello, Jim. How are you? I'm doing fine. We need to remind everybody where to find us. We're out there in a lot of places right now, but not the ones where you would normally go to. Yeah, we're loster than what you used to last say year's last year's Easter egg. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but 93.1 transmitter, they're doing some uh, some some repair work on that, so we do not have a 93.1 air signal, okay? But you can still get us on streaming at your normal places. Uh, News Talk West Tennessee, News Talk 101.5, uh, Tune In Radio, Alexa will get you the 101 feed. And in order to have that air signal, we are we are simulcasting with our sister station 101.5. And a little later in the morning, you'll be able to find this online at uh, y'all.com. Y-A-L-L, no apostrophe in there, y'all.com. And that'll be a little bit later in the morning. You'll be able to see uh, what we do here at the Old Country Store. We have phone numbers, too. Oh, please do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the text All line. else fails, call us. Call us, that's right. The Victory <laughs> Honda text line is 731-410-7560. And uh, you can call in directly if you'd like to talk to John this morning. He would love to talk to you. 731-891-6161. It is Tricks of the Trade, a presentation of West 10 Fence Company and Economy Siding and Windows. Now, all the housekeeping is done. Yeah, that was a mouthful. It was. It was. And, and I'm still wondering where I'm going right now. <laughs> <laughs> or, or where my word, where my words are going? Oh, they're out there. They're just flying all over the place. Well, yeah. Some of them yeah. are streaming. Some of them floating so, in the air. Yeah, the, yep. the swimming and floating in the air, streaming. That's all I think of. But <laughs> you know, we about got to the point that nobody talks to one another anymore. So that's true. Yeah, if that's they'll just pick true. up the phone and give us a call this morning, problem yeah. solved. Yeah. And Provided you, they just heard what I just said or <laughs> not on the wrong station. I think, I think they got you loud and clear out there Well, somewhere. that's good. That's yeah, good. and if you don't want to talk to us, that's okay, too. If you're in one of those modes, you know, where you just, you know, you'd rather text. Well, Go that's ahead. all right. Yeah, right. we'll let your finger. Yep. Can you say let your finger do the walking anymore? Yeah, but nobody knows what you're talking about. That's right. <laughs> I think I just dated myself. Oh, you and me both, man. You oh, and me well. both. Yeah. I said something the other day, and I got a text on me within three seconds after it flew out of my mouth. And he said, he said, nobody says that anymore. You just dated yourself. I said, hey, it happens. Mm. I date myself when I get up in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it, it, we know what we're talking about. That's right. It's just That's hard right. to communicate with those others sometimes. Yeah, it's 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 not in it's not in the transmitter. It's in the receiver in that case, right? Okay. What are I, we going to talk about today? It's we've got a, we got crazy weather now. I mean, that that snow them snow flurries came through here last night. You know, I, I had my boots out and, and ready to go, and instead I'm wearing tennis shoes. I, I'm distressed. All this getting all revved up for something like snow. You know, ever weather forecaster around here is just hollering snow 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 <laughs> i hadn't seen any of it yep and i hadn't even seen my dusting <laughs> uh i hadn't seen any of it. so no. but so i'm wondering what kind of accountability do these guys have yeah but then i got it figured out what's that well they they show this map on uh -huh. on there and it takes into the entire west tennessee from the river to the river to Kentucky to Mississippi. Right. And if a flake of snow falls <laughs> there in any of that geography, yeah. they're right. They claim it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but what I would love to have is a uh, local downtown weather forecaster hmm. that just, you know, something right here uh, yeah. that, that's all us folks that actually are in Jackson, whether to, to get the snow tires out or, or your slickers. And uh, well, people don't call slickers anymore. I just dated myself. <laughs> That's true. So, uh, you know, just to where we can know how to plan our day. True. I, I, I don't I don't want to get all revved up and have to go get my milk and bread yeah. and, and then realize I got too much because yeah. I didn't get stranded at the house. Yeah, then for the next week and a half, you eat milk sandwiches just to get rid of it. <laughs> Man, <ooh. Yeah. laughs> Not good. Not good. Yeah, yeah, I told Eddie Holmes the other day, bless his heart. And all the weather people around here. We're in, we're in a weird place in, in West Tennessee for mm -hmm. weather because things go around us. They come over us. They go under us, you know. 
And I told him, I said, the worst, that's got to be the worst job ever during the winter is trying to predict snow in West Tennessee. And yep. he agreed. <laughs> yeah. You know, for years they said the reason Jackson would never, and I mean never, never. have a tornado uh-huh. is because we were in a bowl. We were in a bowl. That's right. They were wrong. They were wrong. <laughs> I think somebody dipped in that cereal bowl yeah, several somebody, times. Somebody so. got into our wheaty stash one day. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, uh, man, you know, I, I do have a couple of things that we can talk about this morning. All that right. is weather related, and and you know, this is not rocket science stuff. But somebody, sometimes people try to make it more difficult than it really is, yeah. and that is just you know, it's going to get cold, and it's going to get colder. Mm-hmm. And then it's going to warm up. Then it's going to get cold again. But just dealing with it and doing a few common sense things without having to go out and buy a bunch of crazy contraptions <laughs> to control your environment. And uh, this this week, we had a little touch of cold weather. And it got down into the low 20s oh, yeah. for got several down to nights. 19 in some spots. Yeah. yeah. And, and we actually had some frozen pipes out in the construction world this week. Wow. And. Uh, you know, with, with, when that happens, people kind of get in a panic, and it's kind of like, well, I told you it was going to happen. Why didn't you do something about it? But people forget. Yeah. They, they well, let's see, how do I say this? They, uh, I guess everybody expects everything to come to their cell phone now, like, hey, y'all wake up and go out here and yeah. turn your water off. or do. You know, it's just yeah. kind of kind of crazy. This has been going on forever, but people still don't. Well, we get our information differently nowadays. Yeah. We don't get it at all, you know. So it's yeah. weird. Yeah. Well, anyway. But there's a couple of things that people don't talk about too much, but it happens a lot. And it has to do with your drain lines. You know, people don't realize it, but your drains will freeze as well when it gets cold. I and would think most people would think, well, there's no water in those drains. Oh, why would but they, they are. Freeze? They are? Yeah. Then why do they call them drains? <laughs> Well, because of the stink factor, you got to have a little water. I know. I know. Okay, so, so it's nothing worse than having a bone cold day. You know, it might be in the teens, and you get up, and maybe it's even snowing, and you can't get out. So you go over there and uh, decide. Well, at least if I can't do nothing else, I'll do a load of laundry. Yeah. And they go and they turn the washing machine on, and everything's fine. And then all of a sudden, if you got a dog. The dog starts barking, or the cat comes running across the floor, and you realize there's something wrong, Yep. and you go see what it is, and there's water all in the floor, and it's coming out of the drain line where you put that little cricket hose off the back of the yep. the washing machine in the, in the hole in the wall, Yeah. Well, and, the, and it's backing up. Well, you think, well, I got a clogged drain. That doesn't happen very often on washing machines. There's, there's two things that happen. In the wintertime, they'll freeze up, or, and this happens year-round, if you got an older home, and it's got a galvanized drain, and most of them that are galvanized are only an inch and a half, right. and they've started rusting on the inside. Ah. And you got your brand spanking new washing machine that's got a high-pressure discharge on it. Pretty soon you find out it's trying to pump out more water than what that pipe can handle, so it starts to back it up. Yeah. But first, first of all, back to the cold weather on the drain lines. It, inside your wall or under your house, there are two drains in your house that are exposed to the weather. One of them is a washing machine. It may be more likely in the wall yeah. on an outside wall. And the other one is the tub drain. And that the drain, uh, the trap is what I'm talking about. Yeah. There's a trap in the wall from the washing machine or under the house, or there's a trap on your tub. And, and that trap is there to hold water in that line so you don't smell everything else that's in that drain line. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. Yes. So you gotta have that, you got to have that water in there. So uh, if that freezes, nothing's happening. It's just going to back up. Right. So people got to protect that. So uh, it's a very simple procedure. If uh, you think it's just going to get so cold that maybe your traps will uh, drain, won't drain, they'll freeze up, just take a teaspoonful of, or a tablespoonful of antifreeze and just drop them down in, in the drain. That's all it takes, that little bit. Just a little dab will do it. Huh. 
that, that's an old Brill Cream commercial. <laughs> yeah, I did it again. Did it again. again. <laughs> Do they even have Brill Cream anymore? I, I don't know. I don't need it. Oh, you, don't, you don't need it, and I don't use it. <laughs> I think, but, I, yeah, I think they do. It's it's right near the Ipana toothpaste. The what? Ipana toothpaste. I, <laughs> remember that one? Russia, Russia, Russia. You don't remember oh, that? Oh, wow. God, that, I am old. <laughs> oh, you got me. Ipana toothpaste. Yeah, try uh, that one. Well, anyway, uh, that will happen a lot. And, and then say you've got a, a cabin or a second home or a, a seasonal home that you close it up for the winter. Right. They always tell you, put a little... Uh, antifreeze in all of your traps, including your toilet. Right. Because you got to keep water in the toilet. Otherwise, it's going to stink. Oh, baby. Yeah, you're going to smell everything that goes down that line. Yep. So, anyway, that you gotta got to watch stuff like that. Now, what brought all this up, and people in rural, rural communities found this out a long time ago. Now, back in the day, and it's hard for young people to comprehend this, but at one time, bathrooms were not in the house. Yeah. They were in the backyard. Yep, yep. You had that little house out there, and actually there are still some still around yes, here. Yes, there are. Yes, there are. Some people intentionally put them in. They want to have that old thing. Just they for can't. looks. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they say for looks, but some of them are used. Really? Yeah. Well, that way you don't have to come in while you're mowing the grass. Well, you know? that's, that's right. Who? <laughs> I don't want to get grass clippings on your rug. <laughs> That's right. But, uh, see, here, here's what happened. Back when outhouses were the, the place to go. Right. And you had, you know, small homes just had a small one. And some of them, the larger one, had a family. You might have had a two-seater. That's right. That's right. Didn't have to have a petition in there That's either. Right. No social distancing. No social days. distancing. Just <laughs> <laughs> you and a friend in a Sears catalog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Or if you didn't have a Sears, Montgomery Ward would do real good. But yep. that's right. But uh, anyway, and then everybody decided it's about time to have indoor plumbing. Mm -hmm. So the most natural place to create a bathroom in your house was on the back porch and enclose it. Huh. So uh, people would improvise, and they would. Uh, here's what they would do. I've seen this happen. Uh, they would get you a toilet, and then they'd have an old leg tub, and then a freestanding uh, lav a pedestal lavatory. Now, this was yeah. back before they were so stylish. Yeah. They were just, they were there yeah. for to have a sink. And then you put a wall up to petition it off. And then right on the other side of that wall, if you got real fancy and, and had an uppity nice home, <laughs> you put your washing machine on the Ooh, other side of the wall. Yeah. Double duty on that one. That's right. And... Uh, so everything was on the back porch, and then you enclosed it in. Well, you couldn't get those drain lines embedded in the walls a lot of times like you do now. They were on the outside. And uh, most of the times they were just strapped along the outside of your house on your clapboard. Yep, I've seen and, that. And uh, that's the way it was. And it frees up. So if you wrapped your pipes, your water lines, you also had to uh, wrap your drain lines. And... Then we kind of got real fancy, and everybody started building bathrooms in the house. But it just wasn't always that way. That's true. That so uh, that, that's true. just kind of the way it is. So anyway. Yep, I, got a, I got a text on while we're on that, that subject. Yeah. It says, you can get a gallon of RV antifreeze for about $2 a gallon. Yep. I winterize my camper with it, and I use it in my drains like you're talking about because it's non-toxic. There you so go. if you've got critters, they that's won't get right. into it. Yeah. And that is a bad thing because uh, little dogs like lapping that antifreeze yeah. up and they'll take a dirt nap real quick. Yeah, and cats like to drink out of the commode from time to time, so that wouldn't be a good thing either. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. Yeah, good uh, Good. Good point, Texter. Appreciate that. Text line is 731-410-7560. That Texter knew it. Now you know it, so give us a call. And uh, that, yeah. that'd be good. 731-891-6161 is the direct phone line, so give us a, give us a buzz this morning. While we're on those drain lines, yeah. and, and the other reason I was telling you about uh, watching out for your drain lines is is it, it's kind of kind of odd for a uh, drain a pressurized drain line to get clogged up. Most of the time, it's because that pipe is failing. Right. And uh, galvanized pipes 
are not- notorious for that because of their age. Uh, back in the day, you had cast iron pipes, and then you transitioned to galvanized pipes because that's all there was. There was no PVC in the world at that time. That didn't come until a long time later on. So if you have those lines and you used them, and, and it took a real uh, plumber to know how to do that because you had to thread your pipes, mm-hmm. and then when you had to transition it to a cast iron pipe, you you had your lead joints, and if you didn't know how to wipe a lead joint, you really wasn't a real plumber. There you go. And uh, But those days are gone, and actually that's a, that's a good thing. Uh, but those old pipes are still out there, and a lot of them, especially in Midtown and East Jackson, the, the older part of our community, they have plenty of those pipes, especially the downtown area. There's a lot of cast iron pipes. Oh, yeah. And those pipes will fail. You think, well, it's metal. It, nothing's going to happen to that. Well, it will because it will start rusting internally or uh, cast iron if it freezes it'll shatter it just gets big long splits in it wow. and uh, so it, it causes a problem so you know people that have these home warranty programs they will call up and they'll say well i got a clogged line on my washing machine i really haven't ever seen one of those a, a clog clogged, yeah. a clogged line on a washing machine line it's uh normally where the, tr- the strap is broke under the house, yep. or the lines are just closing up. Um, used to, when, when all this, these drainage systems got being put in, you had washing machines that it's more of a gravity feed to, to get the water out of the washing machine. It, uh, they didn't, and then people got tired of waiting. Yeah. And the white coats got in. <laughs> Yeah. And they put these uh, uh, pumps on that it's sling water out of there in a hurry. I guarantee you. And what's better than getting it out in a hurry, people got even more anxious and they put bigger pumps on. <laughs> and uh, so when that happened, you had to change the size of your pipes. Well, an inch and a half galvanized pipe would take care of anybody's washing machine back in the 40s, 50s, 60s, but when the 70s hit and people got a little antsy, uh-huh. um, you had to you had to compensate for that because those drain lines start were starting to close up on the inside. They were they're actually rusting up, and that rust would cause a blockage. And uh, when you couldn't push the water through there, yeah. it started backing up. And when we started backing up, people thought we had a clog. Well, you might have had a clog from rust, but not from what you were putting. Not from the machine yeah. itself, yeah. But then something changed in the 90s. And that was uh, they went to these super-duper high-velocity discharges. Got one. You got one. Mm-hmm. Sounds like well, a jet well, cranking. I, I had a nightmare over a toothpick I'll tell you about in a few minutes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and... Uh, they increased the size. They, the, the the requirement for the drain lines went to two inches right. instead of inch and a half. Well, now they're telling me with this so-called new and improved technology, the day's coming real soon, you're going to need a three-inch line to drain your washing machine. Now, yeah. If, what, what are they thinking? I mean, do they think everybody's people, just going to run out and, and change their plumbing because things, they had an idea? People want things instantly. They want to do a load of clothes in five minutes. But it doesn't. It takes longer now than it did with the, with the old style. Exactly. Now, yeah. who figured that out? And you ever tried to preheat your oven? Now, then you got a problem, too. But we didn't, we're not getting into that story right now. Ah, <laughs> oh, but we're waxing, waxing eloquently. There We've we got go. a couple of texts that, that are on this subject. It says, dated or not. The millennials don't want to hear or know all about that. What my elders taught me, and me just watching, usually has no currency today. Enter China, the big box stores, 
But I need to know. I need them. And it says, oh, by the way, Ace is great, too. Yeah. That's, that's our Ace hardware lover. We appreciate that. They're one of our one of our sponsors here on 93.1 and 101.5. They're great people. Absolutely. This text says, growing up with outdoor facilities, I waited for someone to warm the seat in the wintertime. You didn't want to be the first one. You didn't want to be the first one. Uh, <laughs> I tell you what, on that note, we're going to take a quick commercial break, and we'll be right back, and I want to hear about uh, the, the ballad of the toothpick. Yeah, I'll tell you about that. All right, we'll be right back. Complete Automotive Service Center that does work on area business fleets, servicing and repairing both diesel and gas engines. Our experienced technicians and advanced technology will upgrade your company's vehicle's performance, saving you significant dollars. Graham Snack Food said, Jackson Off-Road keeps our fleet of vehicles on the road in a timely manner, regardless of what repairs are required or what time of the day or night we call for service or repair. Jackson Off-Road, online and on the 45 Bypass. Last time we checked, money didn't grow on trees. So XMC, your Xerox authorized sales agent, is proud to provide cost-effective office equipment and electronic document management to help save you money. Combined with the power and resources of the recognized leader in office products and document services, Xerox and XMC offer you the widest array of office products and document solutions available anywhere. Visit XMCINC.com and allow XMC to help boost productivity, enhance collaboration, and reduce costs in your office. We have been fighting the war on drugs for a long time. We answer the phone 24-7, 365 days a year. On a busy night, we answer hundreds of calls. This war on drugs needs our intervention. Since 2014, Addiction Hope and Helpline has helped people struggling with drugs and alcohol. When the phone rings, we help people when they need it the most. When we get a caller into treatment, it feels good. It's a blessing. If you're struggling, drinking, using, and need to get clean, don't suffer alone in silence. Call Addiction Hope and Helpline. Our people understand, and many are also in recovery. Call for support and strength. You can call for someone who can't or isn't willing. It's an act of love. Together we can help you beat this thing and erase addiction from your vocabulary once and for all. Call 800-520-5228. 800-520-5228. 800-520-5228. I'm Russ Evans. I'm Chris Carter. And I'm Shannon Nordstrom. Together, we're the Motor Medics on Under the Hood. Join us for fun and free automotive advice. If your car is feeling ill, we're the doctors, and we're here for you. Tune in and be entertained while learning more about your car and how to save money on ownership costs. You can ask questions and find out more at underthehoodshow.com. And don't forget about our Facebook page. Join the Motor Medics each week on Under the Hood. The Under the Hood Show, every Saturday morning from 6 till 8, presented by Gene Langley Ford in Humboldt, the dealership service built. It is a Saturday morning. You're listening to 101.5 at 93.1 on the stream. This is Tricks of the Trade with John Allen and uh, John Rawl. Tells me that we are up and running on y'all.com. If you want to go to the internet, y'all with no apostrophes, y-a-l-l.com. And uh, you can see and hear what's going on here at the Old Country Store. It is Tricks of the Trade, sponsored by, in part, our folks over at West Ten Fence Company. Yeah, a great bunch of folks over yeah, there. Man. And they put up a dandy fence, they I'm do. telling you. They, they do. Uh, I like them. I like giving them a call when I have a little project and need a little fence repair or a new one. They'll, they'll fix one that's uh, already up and needs a little attention. They'll take care of one that's brand new. And uh, whatever kind of fence you want, they can do it. And uh, I like giving them a call. They're easy to work with. They get in. They get out. Yep. And uh, very affordable. And uh, it's just a good good outfit to call. They're local, right out here on Hollywood Drive. So I highly suggest that uh, if you need a fence or have a problem or want to do a little addition or put you in an automatic gate or something like that, yep. give Terry Hamlet out here at West 10 Fence Company a call, and I guarantee you, you'll be glad you did. 731-668-5959. It's West 10, W-E-S-T-E-N-N. Fence Company. We appreciate what they do for us here on Tricks of the Trade. Now, we're talking about uh, washing machine drains and yeah. how they put out a whole lot more pressure nowadays. But seriously, I mean, you, why do these guys not think that everybody in the in the in the world is not going to spend want to spend that extra money to increase the size of their pipe when they got to buy a new washing machine? Now, why do? Surely, there's a better way. 
Well, we haven't figured it out though yet. Have we? Uh, yeah. Well, it, it's it's a the thing of it is it, it's just domino effect. People talk about. Yeah. People want things new and improved. Yep. And what they don't realize is is when sometimes you improve things or so they say, it causes other things to have to be done. Yeah. And uh, so here you go with a with what I was talking about. You, your drain line may be an old pipe. And it's too small to handle the volume of water that that new washing machine is trying to put out. Well, what do you do? You may not be able to just fork out several hundred dollars to run you a new drain line. Exactly. And uh, you've got a perfectly good pipe there. What are your options? Well, you do have a couple of options. Oh, really? You're not going to find this in the book anywhere. Right. And um, I'm not going to say this is legal. I'm sure it's not legal, but I'm not going to look. It works, you yeah, know. So. Exactly. But you can do what's called hard piping your line, which is where that little pipe that comes out of your uh, washing machine, you know, it just kind of hooks over in the drain. Yeah. You can rig you up a little contraption right there to attach those pipes. And that way, when it starts backing up, it won't come out the end of the pipe around where the other pipe stuck in it. Gotcha. You know, you can hard pipe it. Yeah. And uh, that will work, and uh, you have to do that sometimes when you have kind of an emergency situation, or maybe you're dealing with some folks that are on limited uh, incomes, and they're just not prepared to uh, have to spend all that money uh, to run a new line. But then you have other things that happen, and here comes the toothpick. Yes. I bought a washing machine one time. Don't know why. I had a perfectly good washing machine, but the <laughs> wife decided I need a new washing machine. Right. Still don't know why either because I was the one running the old one, but <laughs> that's another story. But She uh, wanted you to have the best. She was thinking of you. I, I guess that's it. <laughs> okay. We won't go there. <laughs> okay. But anyway, I, I got one of these. I never heard of this washing machine before, but I'm, I'm, I'm told it was the best yeah it was some kind of facile paxel uh yeah fe- 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 fecal or something fe- uh, yeah 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 that it, one i don't think it come from around here no it does. but it, <laughs> i almost bought one of those yeah ones. well i bought one i mean yeah. you, you look at it had a nice stainless steel tub um had some nice little buttons up there that didn't have oh, a yeah. dial you just pushed them little buttons uh-huh. that really looked high tech Oh, yeah. And it was supposedly washed your clothes is cleaner and faster. Mm-hmm. Wrong. <laughs> which, which is another story. If you get them cleaner and faster, but your dryer's not drying because nobody uses a clothesline anymore. No, no. So what good is it to have your clothes being washed faster than your dryer can dry it? You know what that causes. Yes. You got to buy another dryer. So now you got two dryers for one washing machine. I believe you're on to something. Yeah. Yeah. Remember I told you that domino effect. Yep. So anyway, here I am. I have this beautiful new uh, washing machine, and I wasn't ready to go to one of those front loaders. That just that just didn't sound right. Right. Because it's kind of like them tubs they want you to buy now. Uh for the handicapped people, you know that you got to oh, yeah, get it. You the get at them and walk in and sit yeah. down. Uh-huh. I'm not ready for one of those either uh-huh. because they tell you how wonderful they are. But what dawns on in my head is you got to sit there butt naked in the tub while it drains before you can open the door. Ah, but they have a new one now with a pump on it that drains quicker. So you see, don't there's that domino there. effect. There you again. go. All right. Well, anyway, back to my toothpick. <laughs> yes. All right, so I have this new washing machine, and it's 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 doing a good job. It it'll it has a high velocity, extremely high velocity yes. uh, spinner. Yeah, two speed. I mean, it kind of starts out and kind of wobbles around, mm-hmm. and then it'll it'll even wiggle back and forth to get that load. Yeah, to just where it's right to be, yeah. un, until finally the 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 clutch kicks in and you're <laughs> in high speed. And it'll sling. Yep. Well, well I can't say that on there. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> but it will. <laughs> but it will. So anyway, I'm slinging water because yeah. it wants to get those clothes as dry as possible so right. your dryer won't have to work so hard. Yeah. 
Okay, so all of a sudden, the Secretary of the War Department calls me and says, get back here, we got a problem. And I go out there, and I got water coming out of the top of my washing machine while it's spinning. Whoa. True story. I mean, it's coming around the, the, the rim of the lid. It, it's throwing water out. I don't understand it. So when it finished doing what it was doing, we mopped up the water, and I looked inside, and uh, I went back and, and did another load, but I said, okay, let's try it on low velocity this time. <laughs> we don't want to sling that water too hard. Right. Worked pretty good. I thought, well, maybe the the, the obstruction cleared itself. <clears throat> so I hit it on high again because yeah. it's time to go back to work. Yeah. Here come the water again. Whoa. I says, well, we got a problem. So, you know, when you have a high-tech problem and Houston's not around, yeah. you have to call them a, 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 a mechanic, a washing machine mechanic. Right. And that's just something I don't like to do because – I'm supposed to be able to fix stuff like this, but right. I couldn't figure this out. So here he comes, nice guy. He comes out, and he looks around, and he pulls off his cap, and he scratches his head, <laughs> and he runs his hand inside my drum, and he says, found your problem. I says, well, what is it? Reaches in and pulls out a toothpick. A that, wooden toothpick. A wooden toothpick that apparently I had in my shirt pocket. Yeah. That toothpick had come out of my shirt pocket, and when it started slinging the water around in there, it lodged, that toothpick lodged in the sidewall of the inside of the washing machine. Yeah. Just enough huh. to where when the water was trying to get through the hole, instead of going through the hole, the sidewalls of the uh, washing machine and going out, yeah. it traveled up my toothpick and slung out the top. Now, if I'm lying, I'm dying. It, it happened. It cost me $123 to get a toothpick to get your out. Toothpick yeah, but yeah. at least he knew what the problem well, was. Well, that's true. That, yeah. You don't find that in the manual, in the diagnosis mode. There. If you have a toothpick, do this. Right. <laughs> you don't find that in the manual. If it's a plastic toothpick. Yeah, but, but that's exactly what it was. So there. on those high-velocity washing machines, yeah. Take the toothpicks out of your pocket before yeah. you wash your shirt. I tell you what we have found, and we bought we bought the new high velocity extractor washing machine. It mm. doesn't pump; it extracts the water. And I mean, honestly, it sounds like a seven forty seven cranking up out in the driveway when it starts to spin. Yeah. And and the reason for that is, if I understand it correctly, is to spin it hard enough to get as much moisture out of the clothes or towels or whatever you're drying. So that the dryer can handle it. Right. But it don't work. Exactly. It takes longer to dry the clothes now than it did before I got the whoop de doo Well, that's what you got to do is the whoop de doo <laughs> When you go to wash, you open up that washing machine and you've got all this so-called moisture yeah. gone from the towels. What it's done, it's compressed your washing your your clothes. Oh, yeah. yeah you like see, you used to. It. Yeah, it, it's like used to. You know, it was kind of a one motion. You had your hand on the lid of your dryer, and in your other hand, you reached in your washing machine. You pulled out your clothes and you slung them in the front door of your dryer. Right. Or at least that's what I used to. Sure. Do. Well, you can't do that anymore. You have to reach into your washing machine and grab a towel, and it's like it's shrunk wrapped. Yeah, exactly. And you got to take it out. and You got to shake it. And then you got to throw it in the washing machine because it is packed so tight. If you put that clump yeah. of, of clothes in your dryer, it stays a clump huh. until the latter part of the cycle. And then your one-hour drying times run out, and it ain't unclumped itself. No, it ain't unclumped itself, and you got another two hours to <laughs> That's to right. Work. you got to go in there. And then or you, you got, forget, and you come in there, and everything's mildewed. Yeah. Oh, And, and then you got to go in there and, and uh, well, let's see. <laughs> how do I how do I say this without you, getting barred? <laughs> <laughs> you 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 get the stuff finally dry and it's one big wrinkled mess. Uh-huh. So then, what did the white coats do to eliminate that? 
they put misters in your dryer to get them wet again. <laughs> now, that ought to tell you something yeah, right there. Exactly, exactly. I'm you got to get your clothes wet in order to get them dry. Right. In order to get your wrinkles out. Yep. Now, what's wrong with this world? I, well, you know, I mean, we're, we're so overprotected, we can't hardly breathe. I mean, you and I grew up riding steel bicycles with baseball cards on the spokes and sliding them sideways and upside down and everything else with no helmet, with no knee pads, with no elbow pads. And, and we knew where the low clotheslines were, so we didn't get so hung. No. <laughs> <laughs> but they don't have to worry about that anymore That's because right. there are none. Well, it's true, but yep. you know, you, your clothes were so much better. All right, here we go. Let's, Let's take a I phone call. I think we got one here. Let me see. Da, 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 da. Nope, dropped off. Uh oh. I think. Yeah, yeah, that one dropped off. Sorry about that caller. Give us a call back. Uh, let's see. We got two texts we need to to address here. It says, "What happened to ninety three point one for a week last weekend?" I'll work on that one. Uh, I missed you all and didn't think about this other station. We uh, we are we are having uh, uh, some repairs done to the transmitter and or antenna tower over in Bells, Tennessee, that transmit the transmits the signal for ninety three point one. It has been down for about a week. And uh, they're still working on it. Once they got into it, uh, there were some other things that needed to be done to correct the problem. It's going to take a little longer than we had hoped. But we are still streaming uh, that signal, 93.1, on the, on the websites and on the TuneIn radio, uh, et cetera. So you can get the 93.1 broadcast there. But in the meantime, we are simulcasting everything we do uh, with 101.5. So uh, uh, you hear the voices from 93.1 along with, uh, with uh, Mike Dole in the afternoon with uh, Brad McCoy during the week from a 101.5 on the 101.5 air signal. So we're streaming and we're in the air, but the air signal you have to get at 101.5. And uh, believe me, if you're in a hurry to get 93 back on the air, so are we uh, in spades. What about so, these uh, other stations? The, like the people in Covington and around Shelby County. What that? I mean, those are other stations. Are they still on? No. No, they're not simulcasting anymore. Oh. Under my understanding, they're not. The, yeah, the AM down in Covington in Tipton County. Why don't we do that? I have no idea. It's above my pay grade. <laughs> Here's another another text from the uh, Victory Honda text line, 4107560. You uh, you have read my own tea leaves, ditto. So he agrees with what we're saying, I think. The yeah. what now? He said, I, we have read his tea leaves, his own tea leaves. And then he says, ditto. So I'm assuming he's agreeing with us. Yeah. Oh, well, good. <laughs> <laughs> you, you had that deer in the headlight look yeah. over there for just a minute. Yeah. You, you, you should, if you're not on y'all.com by now, you should have been there just then. That was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was a keeper. <laughs> Oh, man, it is Saturday morning. We're having a good time. We hope you are, too. Texters, thanks for your uh, for your text and continue to do so at 4107560. And uh, caller, uh, I don't know whether you dropped off for another reason or not, but if it was little, if I was a little slow on the trigger, give me a call back, 731-891-6161. We'll put you directly over to, uh, to John, and we'll talk about whatever you want to talk about this morning. So, what other appliances have the uh, have the uh, white coats messed? You mentioned you mentioned preheating the oven. Now, my oven, I've been in my house sixteen years, and I think it's about twenty one years old. Thereabout, we we bought it when it was fairly new. And the oh, the oven is the only appliance in our kitchen that has not had to be replaced yet. So, I don't have the problem with it preheating. It, it preheats pretty quick. But you're telling me that the new ones don't. Well, I don't understand this. It's such a simple concept. Yeah. I, uh, you know, growing up, I had an old electric range. Yeah. And what you do is it actually had a preheat setting on it. You'd turn that dial all the way around until it clicked, uh -huh. and then you turn it back to the temperature that you wanted on. So both those elements would kick in, yeah. heat it up where you want it to be, and then one of them would turn off and stay where you want it to be. Well, now these electronic ovens, especially these that are combination, regular old conventional ovens and uh, convection and convection. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I got I got one of these in one of my other little houses I visit every now and then. Right. 
And I swear it takes 20 minutes to get to 400 degrees. Huh. It takes forever. And it's digital. And you sit there and watch it. It goes from 210, <laughs> 215, 211. Two, yeah. <laughs> and it, it, and it just, it just kind of creeps along. And then, well, you think, well, I'll go in here and take a nap. And maybe when I wake up, it'll be preheated. And, but it, I don't know why it takes so long. And why is it that dishwashers take twice as long now to do a load than what they used to when they first come out? I don't understand that either. Yeah. I mean, yeah they, they say they're, they're conserving energy, but who cares? Well, you know what, that's what they say about windmills, but they don't tell you how much energy they have to spend to make the cotton-picking thing. Yeah. You know, they lied to us again. They did it again. Here's another text from the Victory Honda text line. It says, some of the newer type washing machines, if you put the drain hose too deep in the drain, it creates a vacuum. And the washing machine will never fill up. You have to simply pull the drain line out just a bit, and the washing machine will fill up. Makes a terrible house call just to go pull a drain hose out a few inches. That's right. Yep. Yeah. 120 something dollars to get a toothpick loose, right? Isn't that the truth? Some things you just find <laughs> out on your own. Yeah, that's true. Thank you, Texter. Yeah. Most people wouldn't think to even do that, you know? Well, anyway. <laughs> what, uh, what, when, when you get, when you get calls, you just, people, the dead short is, is one thing I know just, just flies all over you because there's no such thing as a dead short, right? Mm -hmm. Grab it with a wet finger and see if it's dead, right? <laughs> <laughs> but what, what's, what's the, what's the, dumbest thing you have ever been called i mean the most unusual stupid thing you've ever been called for to fix that you could talk about on the air <laughs> you kind of got me on the spot there oh sorry it, about it's, that. i may have to answer that next week i'm trying to think of some that you know it it i don't know it, okay well, it, it, it's like well like a, like a like a like a a garbage disposal yeah when People call up and says, I got a dead short. Yeah. Or they'll say, I see smoke coming out of my disposal. Or they'll say, uh, uh, I'm afraid the house is going to burn down because all I hear is a humming sound. And and then you go out there and all you got to do is push a button. Right. And, you know, it, you kind of hate to charge for stupidity, but... <laughs> It's kind of like time is time, right? Well, I mean, you knew where the button was, and they didn't. Yep. And uh, but it's it's things that when you go out, I I try to make an effort of educating some of the folks just to say now when this happens again, here's what you need to do, and and I go through a little demonstration on how to unclog uh, a, a garbage disposal, and then where that little red button is on the underside, and how to tell if something's jammed or if it's uh, or if something has has happened to maybe trip the circuit breaker, right. little, little step by step things to, to do that will save you from having to pay that deductible on your home warranty plan. Right. And uh, those are things you just try to do. But I'll come up with an answer to that by next week. Okay, that'll work. But uh, right now I'm I'm kind of going kind of blank on on that. Right. But I'll come up with something, and it'll be a doozy. <laughs> I can imagine. I can imagine. Oh, yeah. You're listening to Tricks of the Trade. John Allen, 93.1 on the stream out there and 101.5 in the air everywhere in West Tennessee. And we appreciate you listening this morning. We're going to take uh, a quick break. This is about a minute and a half or so, and we'll be right back. Stay there. I don't feel like I'm 23 anymore. Lack of energy during the day, difficulty sleeping, reduced mental focus and memory, weight gain, including belly fats, reduced sexual desire and performance. Studies show after the age of 30, most people produce 3 to 10% less hormones each year, and I felt it. I decided to do something about it, but I didn't want 152 shots of synthetic testosterone per year. What I discovered is changing my life. All testosterone replacement is not the same. Hormone pellets contain the same chemical structure as your body's natural hormones. They're placed under the skin and released bioidentical testosterone consistently to the bloodstream and last up to six months. Same thing with estrogen for females. I feel great. I don't want youth wasted on the young. I want it wasted on me. Feeling better for you can start with a simple phone call. Back 
Dr. Shannon Bone at Advanced Rehab and Medical. It's 731-503-4277. It's 503-4277. Call today. 731-503-4277. You'll be glad you did. We've been fighting the war on drugs for a long time. We answer the phone 24-7, 365 days a year. On a busy night, we answer hundreds of calls. This war on drugs needs our intervention. Since 2014, Addiction Hope and Helpline has helped people struggling with drugs and alcohol. When the phone rings, we help people when they need it the most. When we get a caller into treatment, it feels good. It's a blessing. If you're struggling, drinking, using, and need to get clean, don't suffer alone in silence. Call Addiction Hope and Helpline. Our people understand, and many are also in recovery. Call for support and strength. You can call for someone who can't or isn't willing. It's an act of love. Together we can help you beat this thing and erase addiction from your vocabulary once and for all. Call 800-520-5228. 800-520-5228. My name is Jeremy Tate. I'm the director of bands at Gibson County High School in Dyer, Tennessee. I'm one of five band directors that make up the Gibson County Mass Band that will be participating in the 2022 Tournament of Roses Parade in Pasadena, California. This trip simply would not be possible without you. We need your help. Visit roses2022.com to make your donation today. It is Saturday morning. This is Tricks of the Trade with John Allen, honeydew helper extraordinaire and keeper of the toothpick. <laughs> I, I that is, that's, just, pocket. that's amazing that one little old thin toothpick like that could do that much water it, slinging. It, it could sling the water out, I'm telling you. I tell you what, if you'll talk about uh, economy siding and windows, I've got some, uh, some work I've got to take care of, and I'll be uh, right back. Yeah, well, we're proud to have economy siding and window and gutter and whatever else they do as one of our sponsors on the show they uh they they're just good folks i mean not only is he a good colleague to work with he's a good friend and a good person all the way around and uh if you got problems at your house maybe it's uh you need some siding uh maybe you need some gutters maybe you need some uh, uh windows put in Give old economy siding a call. Give old Stormy a call. He's the head guy, and he'll come out and measure what all your needs are, give you a fair quote, and those guys will come in there one day. You just They'll just whiz in there and get her done and, and get out of there. They're just good to have. And, and I don't have problems with their products. That's why I like them so much. You don't have to worry about all those callbacks or wonder if it's done right. Uh, just give economy siding a gutter a call. You'll be glad they did. They're local here in Jackson, Tennessee, and uh, they work this area and the surrounding area, and uh, I use them all the time, and uh, we'll be using them for a long time. And they don't pay me to say that, but it's just true, and I like dealing with people that I can uh, depend on because when they do their job well, it makes me look good, too, in my construction business. So don't hesitate to give them a call. You'll be happy you did. You know, I mentioned this a little bit last week. Um, a lot of folks got kitchen appliances for Christmas. And they got so many gadgets on the market right now, you just don't really, didn't know you really needed them until you saw them and what they do. Or maybe you watched one of these crazy info commercials and uh, they told you how you could do your chicken faster and how, how many dozen ways you can prepare it and nothing smokes anymore or it doesn't splatter or uh it might cut your time in half and and all these crazy things that they promise on these new gadgets for you to go out and have and put on your kitchen countertop well i, I guess they all have their purpose and to a certain a point everybody could use them as far as i'm concerned i can do everything i want to do with a uh, crock pot and electric skillet and I don't even use the electric skillet that much anymore. But when that happens, um, I know it's there for me to use. Now, the problem is with all these new gadgets is they take a lot of power. So here you go, plugging all these new apparatuses in. Next thing you know, you're tripping these sensitive GFCI 
uh, receptacles that are on your countertop. Or if you got the old stuff, you may just be blowing a breaker, and all of a sudden you think you got what we call the notorious dead short because every time you plug something in, it starts tripping. Well, I'm going to give you a little hint on something on how to see if you got a problem or not. Uh, I've said before, I grew up with some uh, influential people in my life that taught me a few things in my uh, dense head. And one of them was an electricity and an electronics person at Jackson Central Mary High School. I'm a proud graduate. There you go. Mr. Lebinsky and Mr. Corlew were my instructions. And uh, we learned about all kinds of things in the electronic world back then. This was before... This was back when they still had bulbs in your radios. Transistors were just coming out good, and yep. I didn't really think that'd catch on, but I was wrong. <laughs> uh, but we learned all about stuff like that. But there was a formula that he taught me on how to calculate things, and it's a formula that's probably anybody that has appliances in the house can use to determine whether you've got too much, too many things plugged in. Right. And it's called P equals IE. Pi. Pi. And and not the kind you eat and not the, the pi R squared type pi either. <laughs> P means power and power is measured in watts. Yeah. W-A-T-T. The uh, I is for amperage and E is for voltage. So if you multiplied your amperage times your voltage it would tell you how many watts you were using well now reason i'm telling you all this is on most every appliance that you have it lists on the back of it how many watts it uses right and most all of them are 110 volts so if you take that formula and use it and add up all your power all your watts on that circuit And then divide it by the voltage, which we'll say is 120 volts. Right. It will tell you how many amps total that will use on that circuit. Well, now, if you've got like a 20-amp circuit and you're trying to pull 23 amps that you have figured out because of the total number of watts, it ain't going to work. You don't have a dead dead short. (laughs) <laughs> you don't have a problem that requires an electrician. You have a problem with too many things plugged in. And and nowadays with people's coffee pots, microwaves, bread makers, deep fat fryers, electric skillets, you start <laughs> plugging all this stuff in and oh and you got to have your coffee grinder. You know, that's yeah. coming back. Have you done that yet? Uh, no, no. I uh, I know someone who does, and they they just they live by that. They're coffee coffee nuts, you know, and they they like to do their own. Yeah. No, well, no, no. I use those little cups that are real easy. You put them in there, and you crank the handle down, and about three minutes later, you got a cup of coffee. Uh, please tell me that you're just drinking regular coffee. You're not drinking that weird no, coffee, are no, you? No, 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 no. Oh, you're still my friend. <laughs> <laughs> they, no. got, they, they got this weird coffee that you oh, can buy with all these things in it yeah when i bought the coffee maker it's it's i'll say it it's a keurig and it's a one cupper because yeah. nobody else drinks coffee in my house but me hmm. so i buy the little cups and i buy what i'm drinking right here mcdonald's hmm. coffee yeah that's what i like now the only thing i like in my coffee is occasionally my finger will slip off in there and that's okay but nothing that's else. enough sweetener right that's there. that's enough sweetener yeah. right there so no, I don't. I don't go in for the lattes and the mocha javas and all that. Stuff. Well, the, the, that just gets too complicated. But anyway, bringing all this up, folks, if 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 you'll simply add up your watts on, yep. so you know what you got, <laughs> and divide it by your voltage, which is normally 120 volts. Yeah. it'll tell you how many amps you're pulling on that circuit. So, and if you know the number of amps, then you know. Uh, what you got to deal with. You normally don't want more than 80% of your uh, of your circuit. You don't want to exceed 80% of the load. Right. And that way if something kind of kicks in hard at the beginning, like a refrigerator or something that's got a compressor on it, it won't 
have a lot of nuisance tripping by spiking the amperage right quick. Okay. So, so, so all those little formulas that we learned back in high school that we thought were just stupid, why are we learning these things? They actually have a use. Well, that one does. Yeah. And uh, I use it just about every day going out on service calls when people are tripping breakers. I, first thing I want to say, well, while it's off, let's see what all was plugged in. And then, oh, and you got to throw in the notorious, and this happens this time of the year, the space heater. Oh, yeah. Space heaters will bring the fire trucks to your house, I'm yes, telling you yes, right now. Will. Those, yes, they will. Uh, space heaters are dangerous. They, yeah, they well, are. While we're on that subject, you know, you, you can buy, and I have one because you, you installed it. You know it. Yeah. Uh, we have a combination vent in our, in our master bathroom, a yeah. vent and a heater. Yeah. Are those heaters safer than the standalone floor heaters? Yes. They are. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because they're hardwired. Okay. And, uh, you know, and they have fans that blow over the coals. And uh, it's, it's hardwired to fit to the circuit. The problem with space heaters yeah. is that you plug them into the wall. They pull anywhere from 10 to 13 and a half amps on each one and you plug them into a regular receptacle and in in these modern houses your receptacles a lot of times are only uh supposed to not have more than 15 amps plugged into them they're lightweight they're cheap and they can't handle heat so when you put something like a a major heater like that plugged into one that socket will start getting hot Mm -hmm. Well, when it starts getting hot, that metal expands. The bakelite that's in that receptacle gets hot. And when it gets hot, and then you turn it off, it cools down, and then it cracks. Mm. And then your connections get loose. And when your connections get loose, that generates more heat on that screw that's in there holding things together. And your uh, circuit, the, the wires will start to crystallize, get little white stuff on them. Right. And it'll kind of almost turn bluish purple because it's gotten so hot. And it won't conduct electricity like it's supposed to, so it starts getting hotter. Mm. Next thing you know, your receptacle burns out and everything stops working around the house. Right. So just if you're going to have a space heater, get ready for one. Go <laughs> At least go out and get what's called a heavy-duty commercial receptacle it looks just like all the rest of them it's just heavier it's built for a heavier load yeah and and you can plug things in and it won't get hot like those little cheap 39 cent receptacles that you can buy at the big box store right so uh that'll, so that'll change, save change you. that out and that'll that'll make it a little safer then right well it'll make it safer and it will be designed for the load that you're trying to plug into it and uh anytime you plug something in and you can put your hand on the receptacle and it starts getting, it's warm, uh-huh. you got a problem brewing right there. So it should not be getting hot. Right. Now, the one, the one in, in the ceiling, so you, don't, I don't, you don't use those things during the summertime, the heaters I'm talking about, the ones that are built in. You don't use them during the summertime most of the time. Mm-hmm. Most people wouldn't. And then fall rolls around and winter gets here and you throw it on and it starts to smell bad. Is that just... What, just dust? You need to yeah, take the cover dust. off and suck the dust out of it? Yeah, it's just like what you used to have to do with your floor furnace once a year. Yeah. Yep. You know, all the dirt gets up there and your fuzzy stuff. I mean, you'll look up there and you'll actually see it frying if you look on the coals. Yeah. And it gets really dusty, like the dust on your ceiling fans. Now, you'd think it'd sling it off, but it just sticks to the and blade. Oh, boy, does it ever. But, yeah, it's it doesn't hurt to make sure it's off yeah. and get up there with a vacuum attachment and... Uh, and suck the dust off those things, okay. and then you won't you won't be smelling that. All right. If if you don't, and and the dust does fry, is that a fire hazard in any way? It has been known to catch on fire if it now if there's enough of it, I guess. Yeah. yeah. And I, you know, you go in some and you see a little dirt on there. It's okay. It it normally not going to cause you trouble. But I have seen some where you go in there and you can't even see through the filter. I mean, the, the grill on the front of it, uh-huh. it is caked oh, solid. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you pull it down and you wonder, well, it could, it, it can't, the exhaust fan can't work because you can't suck nothing through it. Yep. And uh, you're certainly not going to get heat coming from the other side. So, you know, a little housekeeping is in order sometimes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, I, 
the other day we we were going to change our our heat and air filters, our central central vac filters, central not central vac central heat and air system. Yeah. Pulled them out the first couple out, and and they were not dirty. And it's been probably six weeks, two months since we changed these things. They were not dirty. So I told my wife, I said, just, just put them back in there. No sense putting another one in there, and it's not going to get dirty either. Apparently, mm-hmm. I, I, why why would it do it sometimes, and sometimes it wouldn't? I mean, you well, haven't changed your maybe living. Judy keeps a clean house. Well, she does. Yeah, I told her. I said, I guess that little Roomba thing we bought does more better than we thought it did. I see more people with those little things running around the floor. Oh, listen, that, you know, if it don't clean good, who cares? It's recreation just to watch it happen. I went in the house <laughs> the other day, and I'm sitting there minding my own business, and something out of the corner of my eye starts moving. I'm thinking it's a rat in the house. <laughs> And I look around, it's a little round saucer with whiskers on it, and it's scooting across the floor. Yep. It's the beatingest thing I've ever seen. Yep, yep. And my, my son and daughter-in-law got one for Christmas this year, and they, they're loving there. We've had ours about two years now. Well, I asked this lady, I said, does that really work? And she says, well, yeah. She's controlling it from her iPad. Yes. Oh, yeah. Now, this is crazy. Yeah. But I said, well, what do you do when it gets done? What does it do? It says it goes back to the house. Yeah. I said, explain that to me. Well, it, it, it goes home, and it plugs in itself into the wall, yeah. and now it'll even dump itself into a... Oh, yeah, the newer ones will. It, 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 uh, when, it, when it docks, uh, yeah, it, su- it sucks all of the dirt in the, in the machine up into a hopper on the wall, so you, know, you don't have to touch the dirt. And people wonder why we're getting fat nowadays. We just don't <laughs> exercise vacuuming our floors like we used to. That's, a, that's entirely possible. All right, next week, some some uh, some uh, stories of the road. Yeah. Yeah, and anything else you want to talk about, we appreciate you being there this morning. And we're going to turn it over to uh, Jimmy Leach here in just a couple of minutes. I'll see you next week, John. I'll be here. Absolutely. 9 o'clock.